like to read from Philippians chapter 4, verses 1 through 9, like to speak on the subject of worry. I think there are probably many people that have occasion and circumstances that have caused worry, but the Bible does address how that we can avoid needless worry. So beginning in Philippians chapter 4, verse 1, Therefore, my beloved and longed for brethren, my joy and crown stand fast in the Lord, beloved. I implore you, Dia, and implore Seneca to be of the same mind in the Lord. And I urge you also, true companion, help those women who labored with me in the gospel, with Clement also and the rest of my fellow workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are noble, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, if there be any praiseworthy, meditate on these things, the things which you learn and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace shall be with you. Shall we pray? Dear Lord, we do pray for this day. We pray that you would bless the reading of your word. We do pray for the leaders in our land. We pray for our president, those in Congress, the senators, the House of Representatives. We would pray that they might all have humility to look to thee for direction and guidance as what would be best for this country and be best for the people that live here. We do pray for those in local offices as well as in the state legislature and the governor. We would pray that they might be ever mindful of the responsibility and the need to have humility as they come before you. As we record this on Thursday, we are very mindful of the National Day of Prayer that is set aside for people to pray. And we would pray certainly for our, our country, our leaders. We would pray that you would be with the churches in America, churches around the world that would proclaim your word, help them to be faithful to the truth that is in the word of God. And most of all, we thank you for what Christ has done, his willingness to go to the cross to die for the sin of mankind. Bless our time as we look into your word in Christ's name. Amen. As we would look in Philippians chapter 4, verses 1 through 9, be looking primarily at the latter part of the verse as you think about Worry is something we do not have to do, or you do not have to worry. Paul had reason to worry, but as we think of Paul in this portion of Scripture, there were many things going on, and he was facing division that was present there in the church that he was in. In uh, Philippi, he was, he was also, there was the threat of death that could have been coming his way. Uh, there was the possibility he had many things that he could worry about at that time. In, uh, as we would think about worry, and just to uh, be mindful of that, and probably all of us have known people that worry excessively, and some that are very much prone to let know their worry and how that that builds and mounts in their lives, and others seem to maybe put on a much tougher front that nothing phases them, nothing bothers them. And really, as we would sort of look at that word worry, what is worry? We would, it comes from a word that means anxious, or as we look at verse 6, it is uh, we're uh, not to be careful. It means to be pulled in different directions. So as you think about being pulled in different directions, and many times uh, in making decisions, there are different directions that one can be pulled as to what is the best direction. And so as we think about, our hope pulls us in one direction, and then our fears that we have in life, they pull us in an opposite direction. And when that is in place, pulling hope is pulling one direction, fear is pulling another, then we end up being pulled apart 
And that is, as we would think about the old English word strangle is, it has definite physical consequences. There's also spiritual consequences. Uh, from the spiritual point of view, worry is the wrong thinking. It has to do with the mind not thinking as it should. It has to do with wrong feeling that has to do with the heart. And it may very well be about circumstances, about people and things. Worry is a great thief of joy. The book of Philippians, the theme throughout the book is joy. The acrostic could be Jesus, others, and you. But thinking about the wrong thinking in the mind, the wrong feeling in the heart, just about the circumstances, the people, and the things. And as we are in a time, it was good to be in a church with a few more folks last night as we heard a message from God's word, and then as we had opportunity to pray and bring our request before the Lord. And I would hope that we would understand that calling upon God is not just a, a uh, escape from reality, but there is reality and hope that is there. In um, verse 7 of Philippians chapter uh, 4, and if we would look back in verse 6, there is some very thoughts that are forthcoming in verse 6, and it says, be anxious. The idea is not to be, to be careful for nothing, but the contrast is that prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, our requests are to be made known unto God. Last night, as we followed our evening time in uh, Bible study, we took time to pray, and what a joy it is to be able to bring requests to the Lord and bring this, uh, concerns. We have missionaries in various parts of the world that we don't always know exactly what is taking place. We have some missionary families that have some weddings that were planned uh, later in the month of June and uh, later in the month of May. And there are certainly uncertainties about how those things are going to unfold and how many people may be able to be there and who can be there. And as we would think, there are many occasions that can cause us to become very much perplexed about what is going on around us. But in verse 6, the, the advice there is, be anxious. We're taught to be all worked up into a dither, a worry, a very anxiety or an anxious spirit. We are, um, it says, be anxious for nothing. Don't become just beside yourself about what could happen, what may happen, what is going to happen. But it says, be anxious for nothing. Don't allow worry to be, but in everything by prayer and supplication. When you have a secure mind, the peace of God is going to guard your mind. In verse 9, it goes on to talk about the peace of God is with us. The peace of God guards us. And if we have the peace of God with us, it will certainly give a stability to our lives. There are many... Um, I know that there's anxiety on the part and some comments of how much different and how unfair it is for the graduates of this year not to have a normal graduation. And so sometime in the hopefully not too far future, those graduates can look back and see that this event that did not go as planned and some of the uh, expectations is just a a small thing in their life. It's not going to be a huge thing that makes a huge difference. And so sometimes we need to make our perspective. If we are to conquer worry, if we are to experience a secure mind, there's three conditions that God lays out or that is laid out that God has laid down that must be met to have a secure mind. In verses 6 and 7, man must be able to pray rightly. In verse 8, man must be able to think in a right way. And in verse 9, he needs to be able to live in a right way. Right praying, there are three words that stand out in this verse about how to pray that is right. And as we look at God's word, let us not make it more complicated than it is. But God gives some very simple directions, some very helpful things 
of how to deal with the things that come along in life and the circumstances that seem to be much different than we might expect. As we think about, in right praying, there are three things as you look at verse 6. The instruction is, be anxious, be careful, don't worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, three words I would like to give us attention to. As we think about prayer, that is the very um, generally just making statements or making requests known to God, requests that are known to the Lord, making requests known to him. And as we think about those requests that are made to the Lord, we need to recognize that one needs to adore, there needs to be adoration. It carries uh, with the idea of adoration, devotion, and worship. Worry comes, when it comes in life, man needs to get alone and be with God and worship him. As you look back and think back to some of the passages in Scripture, there were many times when the most difficult things of the Lord Jesus was coming upon him. He would get alone and he would pray and spend time alone with his father. And his crying out would be is that God would help him to do the will of his father. And in doing the will of the father, Jesus was not looking for that which would be easiest, be the simplest for him. But what did God really want him to do? Adoration is needed to see the greatness and the majesty of God. And so one of the uh, things that sometimes happens is when circumstances and things become much less or much uncertain, we're not sure which way things may be going, it is easy to look and to begin to think of God as one that is less than he is, that his... Uh, his strength and what he is able to do can lose sight of the providence of God, that God is in control, and that not all has to be going according to man's plan for God to be able to carry out his plan. Adoration is needed. There is the greatness and the majesty of God needs to be able to sing. As we would look just purely in the surroundings in the spring of the year, the greenness, the growing of, of grass, the beginning of the flowering of flowers, just the turning from the desolateness of winter to the beauty and the, the life that is shown in spring, it's, it's easy to think about. What of the renewal of that that is in the creation and the surroundings of it is what a great transformation takes place. And that is what we need to be seeing, that God is big enough, that God is strong enough, that God is able to solve our problems. And in the first step in right praying is be able to adore God and have an adoration of him. The second step in praying right to God is, is the matter of supplication, that is, simply an earnest sharing of our needs and problems. So when we come to God, we adore God, we look at God in his greatness, his power, but we come as we bring our needs, we bring our problems, recognizing that in and of ourselves, we do not have the resources or the ability to solve them, but that as we bring them to God, he is able to intercede and take care of those things that come our way. And so the first step is simply the adoration, just to understand the greatness of God, that God is the majesty of God. Second is being able to uh, just earnest sharing our needs. Thirdly is the matter of thanksgiving. That is giving thanks to God. In verse 6, there's three things that is part of being able to pray in a right manner. Adoring God, being able to uh, adore and recognize who God is, being able to make our requests known unto him, and then the matter of being able to give thanks to God for what he has done. Thanksgiving comes after adoration, it comes after supplication, 
but being able to give thanks unto God. In the book of Ephesians, chapter 5 and verse 20, it talks about, it speaks about the matter of being able to give thanks. And oftentimes, thanksgiving is a, a something that is lacking in the lives of individuals often much more. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 20, giving thanks always for all things to God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Sometimes we have sort of, of the attitude of an entitlement that we are to be, everything is to come our way, and there's not really the giving of thanks. Reading in the scriptures when the lepers, the 10 lepers were healed, and just to think how many of the lepers came back to say thanks to Jesus for what he had done, only one of the 10 returned to give thanks. How sad it was uh, to recognize these lepers were so eager to ask, but they were very slow to appreciate and we need to really wonder if that's not very true in those that live today. Would a person with a proud mind, would they even ask God for something? And the Bible tells us in verse 6 that we're to take everything to God. The lepers, they were pleading with those walking by, hoping some would cast them a few coins. They might be able to buy some food that they would be able to uh, take care of some of their needs. But the real sense was they were not looking to God to solve the problem. And oftentimes we look at man as the solution to the problems. But one of the things we need to recognize that man is always limited. Paul is warning in the verse six is, do not worry about anything, but take everything to God in prayer. And the peace of God is going to stand guard over two areas that create worry. And one is it has to do with the heart, and that is wrong feeling, and the mind, that is to wrong thinking. The book of Romans chapter 5 and verse 1 gives us a promise that the peace of God is able to give us a quiet confidence on the inside of man and able to overcome as we would think about, and one of the remarkable stories in the Old Testament is Daniel and the lion's den. And we read of Daniel sleeping with the lions in the lion's den, but the king in his palace could not sleep as he was concerned about what was going to happen to Daniel. So right uh, praying, and as we think of Daniel, he was willing to commit what happened to God and that God would take care of him. Then as we read down in verse 8, looking at the matter of right thinking, and the thinking says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are noble, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever, whatever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, or anything praiseworthy, meditate or focus on these things. Right thinking is very much, peace involves the heart and the mind. In Isaiah chapter 26 and verse 3, thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. Notice the peace comes from trusting in God. Wrong thinking leads to wrong feeling. Oftentimes, as we think about the wrong thoughts, they lead to uncertainty and the difficulties that come along in life. In verse 8, there's a number of words that are addressed there. Talk about what we think upon as truth. And I think sometimes we need to focus and that is one reason there is a great blessing in reading the Word of God, in studying and meditating in the Word of God because it directs our attention towards God. It takes our attention away from the problems, the circumstances, and the trials and the struggles we find. And in verse 8 it says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true. The idea of those things that are true, those things that are honest or noble, those are things that we need to think on. And even as we have 
are going through this COVID virus. We're looking at some of the thoughts and some of the things that they thought were the causes and some of the things that were happening. I, I noted last night that there was in New York City, where there has probably been more cases than any other state in our country, the majority of these cases have come from be, people being at home. And the, the prescription, the address was, if you stay at home and you don't be around other people, that's going to take care of it. And so there was some questioning as to whether was the data being interpreted correctly. One of the things, we don't have to worry about the Bible, whether that data, the information or the truth in the Word of God is true and honest. So uh, that which is true, that which is noble or honest and just, it is worthy of respect and it's right. The Word of God is worthy to be respected and it is also in the right. The word pure there, it addresses moral purity um, in Bible times as in times today. There's a constant attack upon moral, uh, moral morality. That is, uh, morality is under attack. And so when pure, it has to do with moral purity, that which is lovely, that which is beautiful, that which is attractive. And let us think of God as being a beautiful, attractive. He is one that is pleasing. There is no sin. And then it addresses the topic of good report. That is something that is worth talking about. It's worth hearing about. And if there was more discussion and talking about God's word and what God has done, I think it would change the outlook. It would change the direction and the thoughts of individuals. The word virtue is found there in verse 8. And it, it, the idea behind virtue is it's a motivation for us to do better. We think about virtuous or being a virtue or having virtue sometimes as a negative concept, as something that is not pleasing. But the idea of virtue is there's a motivation for an individual to do better. And as we would think about, it is the direction and the influence of Satan for things to go worse, for people to do uh, things that are sinful, that are wrong and displeasing, Praise is anything that is worthy of commending to others. No Christian can afford to waste his mind, to waste his thought power on the thoughts that tear him down or would tear others down. If these thoughts are shared, don't waste the power of the mind on things that will tear down. Put your thoughts to the things that will build up. And that is what is being addressed here by the word of God. So if we're going to overcome worry, there needs to be right thinking, there needs to be right praying, and there also needs to be right living. In verse 9, continuing the thought that is given there by the Apostle Paul, his thoughts were upon God, his praying was right, his uh, thought pattern was right, and his living was right. And in verse 9, the things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. There is a peace that comes from doing the right things. You cannot separate outward action from inward attitude. Sin is always results in unrest unless the conscience becomes seared. There is warning in Scripture about the searing of the conscious, the conscious being very hardened, the conscious not being tender, and that is extremely uh, wrong action, wrong thinking, wrong doing over an extended period of time. It makes a person no longer even distressed about doing that which is wrong. In James chapter 3 and verse 17, we read these words there. But the wisdom that is from above, that is speaking from God, is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Let us notice that that which comes from God, right living is a necessary condition to experience the peace of God. And in verse 9, there are four activities that are addressed. 
And Paul, as he's speaking there in Philippians chapter 4, he talks about things that are learned and received, things that are heard and seen. It's one thing to learn a truth. It's another to receive it inwardly and make it part of the inner man. Facts in the head are not enough. We must also have the truths in our hearts. So the word of God needs to be more than, a, than facts that are placed in our head. They need to be truths that are found in our heart. In the book of James chapter 1 and verse 22, it talks about that which we are to do, that which needs to be done, and it gives us a very clear example of what needs to take place in the life of an individual. In James chapter 1 and verse 22, it says, But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. The key is to be a doer of the word of God, not simply a hearer. In James 1, 22, we are to learn, we are to receive the word, we are to hear it, we are to do it. And that is what is being spoken to us in verse 9 of Philippians chapter 4. There needs to be a learning, a receiving, a hearing, and those things that were heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace shall be with you. Right praying, right thinking, and right living they are the uh, conditions to have the secure mind and the victory over worry. Let us be mindful. Many people today, there is uncertainties on every side. And I'm not here to suggest there is nothing going on in our circumstances, in our world that does not cause anxiety, that would not have reason to be concerned, but we need to recognize just to worry and to fret about things, do not make them to go away. Our thought patterns need to be changed in the direction. The God of peace is going to guard us. The, guard, uh, the God of peace is going to guide us. And if the God of peace is going to guard us, it's going to help us to know which direction to go. If the God of peace is going to guide us, then the question needs to be, why worry? One of the things that we need to learn, and sometimes to implement it into life is much more difficult than it is to say, but we need to understand that God is able to do much more, that God is majestic, he's powerful, he's in control, and we need to be able to adore him and the adoration will help us to have confidence in him that he can do what he says he will do. Let us be mindful that in the uncertain day in which we live, the way to be able to overcome worry and not to be fret and to be anxious is to put our trust in God. And hopefully that we can look as we bring our request to God that God is able to take care of those things that come our way. Let us pray. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we do want to pause and give you thanks this day for your many blessings. We thank you for the word of God. We thank you for the help in being able to think rightly, being able to pray rightly. And Lord, may we be able to have some right thoughts and directions that worry will not be that which consumes us, but there will be confidence and hope, and peace that comes from you. Bless each one that has been listening. We pray for each one as they face the uncertainties of the day, of the week ahead. But may we recognize that the God has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee, that the presence of God is always with us. And as we would look at the Apostle Paul, he was able to have confidence in God that all would be well when he had many reasons and circumstances to become very uncertain about what was going to take place or to have reason to fret, to worry. But he was able to look to thee. His confidence was in you without wavering. And may our confidence and our hope, our trust be in you without wavering in Christ's name. Amen.